Okay, classic meat stew and dumplings. Uh, this is a, a, a British a traditional dish, very staple. Uh, a traditionally probably made with mutton, um, but more recently often made with beef. Uh, you can use mutton, you can use uh, lamb, you can use beef, uh, you can use venison. Uh, you can basically use just about any, any dark meat uh, for this recipe. You will also need some onions, carrots and celery because they are the trinity of, of um, British and Irish stews. And um, you can add additional vegetables which are always tap, uh, usually tap roots. Uh, so we've got a, a parsnip here, a substantial sized parsnip. We've got a turnip, or the, we call this swede, but it's actually rutabaga, it's a type of turnip. Um, that's rather nice in it, it imparts a nice uh, sweet flavour to it. And I've also got um, a, a nice sizeable leek. Leeks are rather nice, if you don't have a leek just add another, uh, another onion uh, to the mix. Uh, other additions could include things like button button mushrooms, which are rather nice. It makes it a little, a little more like the French beef bourguignon there, uh, which is um, a beef uh, French beef stew made with wine and mushrooms, which is really really nice. I might do that one day. Um, and for the dumplings, now the British we don't do dumplings like they do in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, they they tend to mix. Um, uh, coconut and water and flour and m make their beautiful dumplings that way and their dumplings are very substantial and quite chewy uh, rather like a, a gnocchi or a pasta um, but um, in, in Britain we go for these if I show you that we go for these light fluffy dumplings which you'll see at the end and to that end we use suet now this suet is beef suet because I'm, I'm actually using beef in this in this meal today um, but you can get a vegetable suet from this same supplier you can buy that online uh, the British people almost exclusively use this Atora brand uh, when, when we make uh, dumplings or suet puddings of various types uh, if we make a steak kidney pudding for instance uh, we'll make this the suet pudding the suet um, flour um, out of um, out of a Torah. So you can get a vegetarian version for this uh, if, you, if you need uh, and if you don't eat beef for instance. Uh, suet is made from the fatty, uh, from the, the, the very hard fat which collects I believe around the heart, uh, sorry around the kidneys of, of the beef and it comes only from that area of the animal so uh, but it, you cannot substitute it uh, apart from if you use specifically bought vegetarian suet which is delicious as well. Um, I, I've tried dumplings made with uh, beef suet and vegetable suet and I can't see a difference. I, I can't taste a difference, I can't see a difference in it um, and, and they come out just as good. But um, I'm sure a, a, a lot of you uh, that, that haven't had British uh, dumplings will be rather interested in how this turns out. So uh, we'll do that uh, towards the end of the meal. Right, first of all, I've got to turn this lot into that. So points to note, um, I've, I've cut up the potatoes. Uh, the potatoes are in nice chunks, uh, as is everything else. I like big chunks uh, of vegetables in mine. I, I love it. Uh, if you need to know how to prep all these vegetables, um, there are very short, very quick uh, vid videos um, in, on my channel and even those who do know how to prep vegetables there are some tips for really really quick uh, vegetable prep there so um, give that a, a good looking at and uh, from that. The, um, the, the leeks I've cut into fairly large pieces um, that's mainly just because it's going with the flow of, of the rest of it. Now the secret of uh, the vegetables in the stew is we don't want them to cook down to the point where they're just mush so we add those later in the cooking process um, and because we're adding these later in the process I'm just going to soak the uh, potatoes I've cut up in in, in some uh, water uh, with a little bit of vinegar or, or, or lemon juice 
uh, and that will stop them from from browning it while they wait the mushrooms the, they're, they're little button mushrooms so I didn't need to do anything with them I'll leave those whole and they'll go into the stew I've left the onion and the celery on the side because we are going to use that uh, to cook the beef um, to cook the meat <coughs> um, till it's tender before we introduce the vegetables to the stew the very last thing that will go in is the uh, dumplings but I'll show you that in uh, very shortly um, the next thing I need to do is turn that into that uh, what I've done uh, that particular joint was uh, 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 just over a kilogram uh, two and a quarter pounds of brisket and I've cut that up and left the fat on because fat is flavour and it's not a terribly fatty joint anyway um, the other cuts of meat I like to use uh, if I could have got it I would have used shin beef because I love the texture of shin beef uh, for this um, and the other popular cut for uh, stewing in Britain is chuck uh, which comes from, I believe comes from the shoulder area of the beef uh, chuck steak and uh, on venison is really good um, uh, mutton shoulder or leg of mutton and the lower leg of mutton is very much like shin beef so I, I, I really did love that if I can find it it's getting harder to find in the UK apart from uh, some of the um, halal Indian uh, Pakistani butchers they, they often do it uh, right so uh, now we need to get down to uh, cooking down the uh, frying off the meat and getting it sealed so we'll change the uh, camera shot and we'll be looking at my big uh, cast iron pan all right the pan's coming up to heat and i'm throwing some oil just to coat the bottom of the pan get that up to heat for a second or two it won't take long with this because that's cast iron i love that pot The tip of using the cast iron pot I got from Taste of Trini and uh, as a lot of you will know that uh, Taste of Trini uh, and I have done uh, a bit of a collaboration and I've actually been to Trinidad um, and you'll see a link to uh, Taste of Trini's videos at the end of this, um, at the end of this video so, so get over there and uh, see how it's done. All the recipes work, they work great and they taste amazing. So uh, if you want to know the lowdown on good home Trini cooking, that's where you need to be. Right, so as you can see in this wonderful cast iron pot, uh, the meat is starting to brown really, really well. And Spoonzilla's made another appearance. Right, uh, what I've got is I've got a couple of um, stock gel pots, uh, or you could use uh, stock cubes. I'm just using two of those um, because I don't have any fancy beef stock to hand, and um, I'm just going to add those with water to the stew once I've sealed off this meat and uh, also in there now I'm going to put the onions as it starts to brown I want to get the onions in there because I want to infuse that meat with the flavour of onions and also the celery which is a fabulous fabulous vegetable for um, stock celery leeks onions carrots you know it's all there they're the best in my opinion they're the best stock beds there are. I think just about everywhere you go in the world, they have their own sort of holy trinity uh, of vegetables. Uh, I know down in Louisiana, they, they like to use um, bell peppers as well in there. So um, that gives their wonderful food a really unique taste. The Cajun and Creole food of uh, Louisiana gives that amazing, distinct flavors. And 
in India they use onions, garlic, and ginger, which is kind of their trinity of uh, of, of uh, vegetables and aromatics, which they make their wonderful curries from. Um, and uh, likewise elsewhere in the world, I'm sure you can uh, fill in the gaps there for your particular part of the world. Right, just gonna, that's starting to finish browning. There's a wonderful aroma coming off the celery and the onion now. And all I want to do is get a seal on that meat. There you go. And with good quality meat, it doesn't start leaching liquid into the oil. And uh, I'm, I'm rather lucky. I picked this uh, beautiful piece of brisket up from uh, Aldi, and uh, and it's just frying. It's fabulous. It really is good. Good quality meat. Um, right. I'm, I'm going in with the stock now. I'm just going to throw those in there. Just little gel gel stock things. Um, popular in Britain at the moment. Right, and the other one is I'm going to just top all that up now with, let's do it with this hand so you can see what's going on. Just going to top that up with some water and how much water I hear you say, well, till it covers the meat is what I would answer. So that, that was pretty well guessed, so, and there we go. Now, what I want to do with that, um, I don't want to season that with salt and pepper just yet. Um, what I want to do is I want to get it cooked until uh, the liquid is, is boiling and it's started to form a stock. Then I shall taste the stock and then we'll decide how much salt and how much pepper we're going to add. All right, because. Uh, so meat, meats can be inherently salty and we just don't know how much to add at this uh, stage. And also, um, I'm using a familiar stock cube, so I know how salty that is, but if you don't, again, this is a good thing. So you need to, to, to taste um, your stock so you know where you are going forward. All right, we'll get back to you in a while. All right, quick taste. Right, that's going to need a bit of salt, not too much, um, that should just about do it, and it's going to need some pepper, 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 crack black jack, and loads, because you know how I feel about pepper by now, love it, and then what I'm going to do is turn the heat down and let that simmer for about an hour, hour and a half, and see what the meat's like at the end of that. And as soon as the meat uh, st starts to turn tender, that's when I pitch in the vegetables and then just cook those off for as long as it takes to cook the vegetables through. That way you don't end up with vegetable mush. All right, it's been cooking about an hour and a half on a low simmer. So I'm just gonna try a piece of this meat. Because what I want, let's have a taste, that's right where I want it. It needs a little bit more salt, um, but the meat's uh, right at the point where I want it. And the, the, the point I want it is with about another, say, half hour more cooking, because we want to get the vegetables cooked now. Um, so by the time I finish cooking the vegetables and the meat, it will be just about absolutely perfect. Um, first of all, I'm just going to put a bit of extra salt in it, and that should just about do it. And always a little bit more pepper because I can. And then into that, now I can crank the heat up a little bit, a um, couple of notches, and get in the potatoes and all the vegetables. Now, that might look bulky at the moment, but that will cook down a little bit. By the way, the mushrooms in this are completely optional, and uh, I've cleaned those up as well. I, what I do, I don't wash them per se. I rub them down with a, with a bit of kitchen paper. They can just sit on there. 
and they'll just cook in nicely. I'm going to put all those in because I can. And they will add their delicious mushroom flavour to the stew. As I say, they're optional. If you don't like mushrooms, leave them out. There you go. Right. So I'm going to cover that now and um, bring that up to uh, uh, the, the, a boil and then low simmer it again for about another half hour. All right, for the dumplings, I'm going to use a cup of self-raising flour and half a cup of suet and I think I might actually need a bit more self-raising flour. Let's have a look. So I need half a cup of suet, in fact I'll put the rest of that in, there's only a little bit, and uh, I'll put another half cup of self-raising flour in there. So that's one and a half cups of self-raising flour. If you haven't got self-raising flour you can use all-purpose flour and two teaspoons of baking soda and you'll get pretty much the same effect. Um, I'm also going to add a good pinch of salt to that and other additions you can add to it are herbs. Uh, the herb I particularly like to add to these is either uh, uh, parsley is quite nice but uh, in this case I'm going to add a bit of thyme I do rather like thyme and it does make really nice herby dumplings so that goes in there so that's dried thyme and it's about a teaspoon two thirds of a teaspoon of, of um, dr uh, dried thyme and into this I need to add some water so I'm going to make a well in it and then add about a cup of water and then we'll mix that up with your fingers and you get a fairly stiff dough to start with and what happens is the suet forms pockets as it cooks the suet runs out and it forms pockets of air inside the dough inside the dumpling so you end up with these light and fluffy dumplings. You don't need to work that too much. All you need to do is keep moving it until it's picked up the flour. My brother's gonna like this because he loves dumplings. All right. I went a bit too heavy on the water there, I think. Uh, but what you're trying to get is a dough that looks like that and there's a skill to this um, because we put that now into the stew to cook for the last few minutes um, but I'll show you that uh, as soon as the stew's ready alright what I do is I use two spoons so I basically make a couple of canals like that and just literally just drop them in to float on top like that so take one and drop it in take one and drop it in really that simple you don't want fancy shapes just get them in there so you want to do these with about 15 10 to 15 minutes of cooking time left so that the dumplings have a time to cook through. Um, that worked out rather well. Uh, you can make the dumplings a little bit smaller and, and they probably won't need quite as long cooking but we like our dumplings nice and big because that's how we do it. And the herbs in the dumplings are totally optional. Uh, a lot of British people don't put herbs in their dumplings at all. Uh, I particularly do like herbs in my uh, dum um, herbs in my dumplings. Uh, one thing I should have done first before I did all that, um, I've mixed up some flour and water, which I'm going to use to thicken the stew. Uh, but I'll probably do that towards the end now. I, I will lift out the uh, dumplings once they're cooked, and then I will thicken it. Um, 
so it doesn't really matter which order you do it but uh, uh, I, I would have preferred to have uh, thickened it before I uh, before I added the uh, the dumplings but here we go I'll put that lid back on now so they can cook covered again we keep that on a, a fairly low heat I'm going to turn that down to uh, to two uh, out of six so it's it's in the the first third uh, of my heat range and uh, so it's basically a simmer uh, I'm going to leave it like that for another 15 minutes and then we'll get back to you So that's the uh, dumplings cooked. It's about 15 minutes uh, and you'll see they've swollen up to quite a size. Uh, that's because we're using self-raising flour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the dumplings so I can actually um, thicken up this stew. There we go. Um, that's the dumplings to one side. Normally they would be floating on top of an already thickened uh, stew if I hadn't totally messed up and not thickened it first but no harm done we'll just drizzle in that flour and water and then allow it to thicken up our stew and depending how thick you like it we tend to in our family we tend to like it rather nice and thick and I'll just put that back in while I show you the dumpling. So our dumpling, uh, you'll see, is kind of light inside and doughy. And like I said, that's where the, the suet actually cooks and then runs out, leaving air pockets inside the dumpling. And I'll just try that here. Mmm, delicious. And they pick up the herbs and they also absorb some of that lovely stew. Um, you can't beat them, they're absolutely delicious. So that's, um, that's a British dumpling for you. All right, that's thickened back up. So I'm just gonna have a, a taste and do a final adjustment for a seasoning. Mm. that's pretty much on the bunny um, I'm just going to add a little bit more pepper because I do like me pepper so a little bit more pepper just to finish it up and that boys and girls and gastronauts out there is pretty much ready to serve up so there we have it classic uh, British beef stew uh, with dumplings, with herb dumplings. Enjoy.